You're watching Telecom TV. We are joining from Future Net World 2024 in London. Now I'm delighted to be joined by Laurent Labouche, Group CTO and SVP of Orange Innovation Networks. Hi, Laurent. Thank you for joining us. Hello, Yannick. So first off, how important is automation for network operators? And where is Orange integrating automated processes? Yes, so uh, network automation uh, for us is uh, extremely important. Uh, we have started uh, this uh, journey already uh, years ago. Uh, we are um, addressing uh, uh, different uh, aspects of uh, network automation, uh, very focused on the way we do change. Uh, change is about uh, how you can bring uh, DevOps and DevSecOps uh, into the network operations. And this is, uh, this is a big challenge, and I think we are progressing uh, in order to, to, uh, to make it very concrete, we have implemented what we call a network integration factory, uh, which is in fact uh, instantiated in uh, the different countries today. And all the different network integration factories are working together in order to automate uh, testing, integration, and then deployment of network functions. There is a second part of uh, network automation, which is also uh, extremely interesting. Uh, it's about how you can leverage uh, all the, the data that we get, that we ingest from uh, our network in order to uh, automate uh, some of the uh, monitoring, uh, fault uh, management, uh, anomaly detection uh, processes. And we've uh, started to do that with uh, different countries. We already have some very interesting and very good first uh, results. Now the question is how we can create uh, this capacity at scale uh, and how we can empower our network oper operating center to uh, transform uh, the operations into uh, fully automated uh, uh, operations. It, it's a journey, uh, so we are in the middle of the journey. And you mentioned the six-level model for autonomous networks uh, based on TM forum scale. And you mentioned that Orange is on level two at the moment. What does this mean for the company? Okay, so. Basically, uh, we are uh, leveraging uh, uh, TM Forum, uh, and in TM Forum, there is this notion of uh, measuring how autonomous the network are. We are using uh, this scale of uh, zero to five, which is very similar to uh, uh, autonomous autonomous car, uh, driving car, and uh, we have assessed all uh, the countries in all our geographies. So we have looked at all the different processes and uh, looked at how uh, automated we are today. So when I say we are at level two, it means that, uh, so it's average, but it means that we have already uh, started to implement the right uh, processes. We have done uh, the first uh, key uh, automation. So for instance, the network integration factory is there, but we, have not yet uh, implemented uh, uh, AI uh, uh, at scale uh, for the different use cases. In some areas, we have uh, implemented uh, uh, AI for root cause analysis, for uh, also uh, predictive network maintenance, but only in few places. So now uh, we are trying to uh, really uh, bring uh, those capabilities at scale, but then there are some challenges the, the most important is to make all the data accessible. We call it uh, data democracy and how we can bring the data in a data lake. Uh, uh, hopefully, uh, we want to, to uh, bring it to, to the cloud and then leverage uh, that capability and implement with uh, MLOps uh, techniques and with our partners. Uh, we are working a lot with Google we want to implement the different use cases to close the loops uh, and bring automation. You mentioned the importance of data. What, what are some other challenges to network automation? 
one of the challenge is uh, to uh, bring the skills to upskill uh, all our uh, workforce uh, at scale. So it's a lot of uh, upskilling uh, in my team uh, within the different countries. It's also a lot of reskilling. And we need to uh, bring in the same uh, teams uh, people who are very knowledgeable about data, data engineers, data scientists, and people who are really uh, extremely good at network operations, who know the business, and who are ready to uh, drive uh, how, wh what is interesting in order, what can we automate? Something very interesting during the past year, we've watched very carefully uh, the big progress made with generative AI. And it's impressive to, to, to see uh, the kind of uh, capacity that we can get with uh, generative AI. And now we start to see how we can leverage in some very concrete use case to make our network uh, very easy to interact with, almost in uh, using a, a native uh, natural language. So we are working on the first use cases to do that. So it's very exciting, uh, but at the same time, very challenging to bring the right people together. And during your session earlier on, you mentioned a backwards approach when it comes to use cases, finding the right use cases and monetizing the network. Can you share a bit more about this? So, thank you, Yanni. Uh, in, uh, I, I, I like to see that as a, there are two sides of the coin. Uh, we are very focused on automating the engine. But the reason is why are, are we doing that? We are doing that because we want to transform ourselves into a platform. We want to monetize our network. We want to find the right uh, use cases uh, where we want to be very, very focused. So as you say, we need to work backwards. That means that we don't want to bring, uh, let's say, all the bells and whistles at once and say, OK, now uh, all the developers, you can use it. That doesn't work at all. What we want is really to be focused on key problems. Like one example is how we can leverage uh, identity uh, API in, in the network in order to help banks to uh, mitigate fraud. Another example is how we can use uh, the short latency of some uh, networks on 5G, 5G SA, in order to address some very specific industrial problems. Like, for instance, if you need to control a GV in a factory, if you need to uh, uh, control uh, the cranes in a harbor, uh, how can we be very focused on those very specific use cases? We don't want to uh, boil the ocean. We want to select a few of them and be very focused. And how important is it for you to partner with the right existing players? Oh, we will not make it alone. Uh, it's an industry journey. So first of all, we need to leverage our peers. We need to work together. At the same time, we are competitors, but we are competitors and we share the same foundation. On the foundation, on the basics, we need absolutely to uh, create scale. We need to create scale on the telco cloud. We need to create scale on uh, the basic network APIs. And we need also to bring uh, uh, other uh, partners in the ecosystem. I strongly believe that hyperscalers uh, partners are very important. We need to leverage them at different level. On the telco cloud, uh, for some workloads, uh, we need also to work with them on AI, how we can use uh, all their very uh, powerful capacities. Uh, we are working very closely with Google, as an example, but we are also working with AWS uh, in order to deploy a 5G cloud network. Uh, so we want to work with all of them. And uh, each uh, cloud provider today has some uh, advantage and we want to take the best of each one. I think with uh, hyperscalers, we also have to, to play in their marketplace uh, because they have a very strong and very powerful marketplace where they can attract developers on some verticals. 
this is not our DNA. And uh, we can uh, leverage their capacity and really work very smoothly uh, with, with their uh, marketplace. That makes perfect sense. Lauren, thank you very much for speaking with us. Thank you very much. Thank you.